Amen. Amen. I would like you to turn in your Bible to um, a verse of scripture found in Job 22 verse 21. I want to talk to you about uh, giving your seed a specific assignment. In other words, I want to teach you a little bit. We've been trying to finish this now for two or three weeks and I hope that, that today I'll be able to tail end it. Now, you must understand that before I start to teach you, you've got to understand that it is God's will to prosper you. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Say it's God's will, it's God's will to, prosper me. to prosper me. That's where God wants you to be. He wants you to be very rich. Amen. Tell someone God wants you to be very rich. Now I explained to you the term, the meaning of the term rich. I didn't mean to say, when I say everybody, you know, God wants everybody rich. I, I don't mean to say that everybody will end up millionaires. No, because, you know, not everybody is trained to be millionaires. There's a training. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. There's a training. If God puts excessive wealth in your hands, you may destroy yourself with it. So there's a training there. But I said to you that the word rich actually means a full supply. Did you get what I said? A full supply. Your rent paid. Your bond paid. Your car payments paid. There's food in the house. There's money in the bank. Come on, talk to me. You know, uh, I mean, it's a full supply. And God works like that. He wants you to have a full supply, not only having your need met, but also you have surplus to do what? For the work of the kingdom and to also sow seed into other people's lives. Amen. That means you have access to give to someone else. Now, the scripture in Job, uh, chapter 22, verse 21 says, Now, for those that have not been following the teaching, my encouragement to you would be to buy the previous CD so you can play catch up, all right? But I can't go back now. I've got to pick it from where I've left. It says, now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. Watch the words of the Lord. He says, now acquaint yourself with whom? With him, with God. He says, if you acquaint yourself with God, you will be at peace. Hallelujah. You want peace in your life? Acquaint yourself with God. You want peace in your life? Acquaint yourself with the Word of God. It says, Now acquaint yourself with Him and be at peace. Thereby, bad will come to you. Not everyone's following, I see. <laughs> what does the scripture say? It says, Acquaint yourself with God, with Him, and be at peace. Shalom. <laughs> Nothing missing, nothing broken in your life. You understand? And he says what? He says, thereby good will come to you, brother. If you really want good to come to you, acquaint yourself with him. Acquaint yourself with God. Acquaint yourself with the word of God. Make this the final authority in your life. You understand? It's not what grandma said. It's not what grandpa said. It doesn't matter what uncle, uncle and aunt said, you know, that and that and that. No, it's what the word of God says about you. Make this the final authority. Come on, talk to me. I have made the word of God final authority in my life. And I trust you are doing that too. When you make the word of God final authority in your life, the devil can't move you from your mark. Circumstances can't move you from your mark. Pressurizing situations that will confront you cannot move you from your mark. Why? You have already acquainted yourself with Him. Hallelujah. When disturbance come, you shout, peace, peace. Hallelujah. Whatever visits you, you will have a word in your mouth to speak. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now it says in verse 22, receive, please. I like God's, uh, uh, not sense of humor, but rather his, uh, his, uh, 
his kind way in putting things. He says, receive instruction, please. See? Receive, please, instruction from his mouth. And lay up his words in your heart. Well, that's it. Everything that comes out of your mouth should be the word. I mean, you are a word practitioner. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That means you have medical practitioners, you have law, you know, practitioners of law, but you as a born-again Christian, what type of practitioner are you? A word practitioner. Boy, I'm an expert at the word. I know what to say. I know how to prophesy. I know how to change something. When darkness comes, I speak light. When bad things come, I prophesy goodness. When I see rocks and hay and stubble, boy, I prophesy green grass in my land. I prophesy a table placed before me. Say hallelujah. It says, if you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. Hey, that's your portion. If you return to the Almighty, and have you returned? Yes, sir. You are born again. You are in the way now. You are in Him now. He's in you now. The Bible says if you return to the way, you are built up. Say, I'm built up. Say, I'm strong. Say, there's something on the inside of me. Like I have a saying, I said, it's not on top, it's on the inside. God has put that treasure in earthen vessels. There's something inside of you. You are not ordinary. You understand? People look at you from the outside and they think you're ordinary. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you are not ordinary. You have the Spirit of God dwelling on the inside of you. What are you talking about? When sickness comes, speak in tongues, it must flee. When poverty comes to visit you, speak the word of the Lord. Boy, wealth comes, riches is in my house. I'm telling you, listen, listen, listen. He says, uh, if you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. Say, I'm built up. I'm Say, I'm strong in the Lord. No, you're not, you know, you're not from that group that says, well, I'm waiting on the Lord. You know, whatever he do, he do. Whatever happens, happens. No, you're not from that group. You understand? You're not from that group that waits for God to do something. You are from that group who already has God on the inside of you, who already has God's Word on the inside of you, who already have God's Spirit on the inside of you. You're already built up. You're already strong on the Lord. When you speak, things begin to happen. When you speak, you shift things in the realm of the Spirit. What do you mean waiting on the Lord? Brother, God's waiting on us. Speak the word. And after you speak the word, you will create things. What do you mean? When we speak to sickness, it must go. When we speak to poverty, we resist it. It must go. You're another breed of people. Say, I'm a word practitioner. No, it's not about the pastor only knowing the Word of God. Every child of God ought to know the Word of God. You understand? It's not only for the pastor to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. No. The Bible says, And these child shall follow them that believe. Are you a believer? Then signs, wonders, and miracles must follow you. Hallelujah. You understand? If someone is sick, lay hands on them. If the dog is sick, don't run to the vet. Place your hands on the dog. Many years back, I anointed a dog with oil, anointing oil. And I prayed, and he, he became well. <laughs> you understand? Anything that you speak to must rise up and live. There's something. Boy, I've got something. I've got something. Ay, Allah. Hey. <laughs> I said, ooh. There's something on the inside. What are you talking about? You depressed? Disappointed? 
How can God's people be disappointed when he has appointed, I mean, Jesus Christ, heir of all things, and he's made you an heir of all things? You cannot be disappointed. You're beyond that. You understand? You are fully laden with the blessings of the Lord. But the Bible says he's blessed you in Ephesians. He's blessed you with all, not some. What is it you want? Peace, it's yours. What is it you want? Gladness, it's yours. What is it you want? Joy, it's yours. What is it you want? Money, it's yours. What is it you want? Promotion, it's yours. You understand? I'm not preaching you a dead message. I'm giving you a word by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, Paul says, he says, I did not come to you with the crafty, wise words of men, human wisdom. He says, I came to you with demonstration of power. The word of God says, dunamis power. The dynamic ability to cause changes. What are you talking about? <laughs> you can say anything, brother, and you'll have what you say. The other folk are waiting on their God. Because their God is not listening. But you are <laughs> alive. So speak the word of the Lord. Listen, listen to this. Watch this. If you return to the Almighty, you will be built up. And you will remove iniquity far from your tents. See, it's impossible for you to sin. Oh, yeah. Some of you didn't catch that. It's impossible for you to sin. You are not a sinner. Saved by grace. What sinner saved by grace? You are God's sons and daughters. Where you say, but pastor, you know, you don't understand. I'm still misbehaving. Well, stop misbehaving. Get over your issues. But it doesn't mean to say God looks at you as a great sinner. Saved by grace. You know, you don't understand, Pastor. You know, they say we're not angels. We're just sinners saved by grace. <laughs> you are God's sons and daughters. Don't you know your inheritance? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Listen, and the gold of offer among the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty. Now watch this. Hey, yes, the Almighty shall be your gold. Amen. Everywhere you are going, brothers and sisters, you are carrying the presence. You are carrying gold. Amen. The Almighty God shall be your gold. The Almighty God is your treasure. See, you can't lack. It says, yes, the Almighty will be your gold and your precious silver. Hey. Uh. Lack, what do you mean lack? If there's something you need, you speak it into existence. Watch this. He says, for then you will have your delight in the Almighty. See, when I'm driving my car, you know, I'm not thinking about something else. I mean, I'm singing to the Lord. I'm speaking to him. Why? He's my gold. He's my silver. Come on, that's, why, that's why sometimes we have gold dust. Now you know why. Because the God that's inside of you, he manifests. And he just gives you a taste of what's going to be like in heaven. And some, pe some, some people are trying to figure out whether gold dust is from God or what. He says here, he's your gold. God is your gold. Other people take gold and make gods. Your God. Listen, your God. And my God. Is gold. <laughs> what are you talking about? It says, delight in the Almighty and lift up your face to God. You will make your prayer to Him. He will hear you. It doesn't say God may hear you. It doesn't say God is partially deaf. It doesn't say in the sweet by and by. No, period. God hears you. 
Say, he hears my prayers. He hears my prayers. Every time you pray, God hears you. Every time you ask, he hears you. It doesn't matter whether you're a young Christian. Doesn't matter whether you're illiterate. Doesn't matter whether you're academically qualified. It doesn't matter whether you're a scientist or not. Doesn't matter whether you're a medical doctor or not. Period. God hears you. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now watch this. You will make your prayer to him and he will what? Now this is very important. Listen to this one. And you will pay your vows. And verse 28. And you will also declare a thing. And... See, like he says to Ezekiel, can these bones live, Ezekiel? Oh, Lord, you know, you know. <laughs> can you be prosperous? Well, Lord, you know. Then he says, prophesy. Prophesy to the dead bones. Prophesy to your bank account. Now, that's what I'm talking about, giving your seed a specific assignment. You say, but pastor, I, I, I'm not experiencing what you're talking about. Great, prophesy. Look at your bank account and say, boy, I don't see zeros. I see digits and then zeros. Every time you go to the cash machine, don't say, well, I'm putting in my card. I'm nervous now. I don't know how much is, what's my balance. I don't know what's going to come up. Say, ATM, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. You will produce for me. Well, you say to me, but I'm shy, or, 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 you know, what will people think? Well, when you were drinking, <laughs> and come out the pub drunk, and wobble to your car, <laughs> did you worry? It's normal. So the Bible says we are filled with the Spirit. So you are filled with the Spirit, not just in church, you are filled in the Spirit 24-7. You're drunk in the spirit all the time, all the time. At the ATM, in the bank, at work, there's something inside. Let's take it. Listen, listen, I was thinking about this. If evil spirits can possess people, so the Holy Spirit. If the Sangoma can get so saturated with evil spirits, what about you, the instruments of righteousness? You can be possessed, full, saturated with the Holy Ghost. Say hallelujah. What are you talking about? You're trying to be, brother, I'm made. <laughs> You're trying to be born again. No, I'm not trying to be born again. I'm made. Even the mafia sometimes have more faith. If you watch mafia movies, you know, when the guy is, you know, is ranked, and then uh, I, I like watching those movies. I don't know about you, but I, I like watching mafia movies. Uh, organized crime. Not because I like to do that. I just like, I think they're cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I just think, you, you know what, listen, we, we sometimes adversely pick on them. They are highly organized institution. They must be highly organized and disciplined. And you know, when a, when a mafia person is ranked, you know, they, they, they make a blood covenant. He's ranked. And you know, when he walks in a place, everybody stands up. Why? You know, Al Capone's here. You know, you know what I'm saying? The Donner's here. Why? They say he's the made one. All right. You have also been made. Amen. What do you mean, I've been made? Brothers and sisters in Christ, the day you said yes to Jesus, Amen. everywhere you walk, you are carrying authority in the realm of the Spirit. When demons look at you, they say, Ha, huh, you I know. That one I don't know. See, Paul I know. Jesus I know. Who are you? To the sons of Sceva. When they look at the ungodly, they don't know them. But they know 
They don't recognize authority in the, when they look at you. Ah, you. <laughs> Some of us are scared of demons. They're scared of you. Tell someone demons are scared of you. The Bible says you will also declare a thing that will be established for you. So light will shine on your way. I like that. When they cast you down, you will say, hey, watch this. When they cast you down, you will say, exaltation comes. So where can they put you down? They can press you down. But because that is not your position, you'll bounce up. At work, they'll push you down. You won't stay there long. Let me explain to you why. Have you ever been to a swimming pool and take a beach ball, fill it with air, and dive into the deep end with it? And let go. That thing just pops right up. Because it's a bubble of blessing. There's air inside. You are a bubble of blessing. So people may try to drag you down. Brothers and sisters, won't be long. You, you see what I'm saying? Your destiny is success. Watch this. He says, uh, so light will shine on your ways. When they cast you down, you say exaltation will come. Then he will save the humble person. And he will even deliver one who is not innocent. Listen, brothers and sisters, that is your portion in Christ. Are you ashamed of your inheritance? No, sir. No, sir. I mean, can you imagine if you were related to the Oppenheimers? Listen, you walk into a store, maybe with your, with your sandals and shorts and t-shirt, you want to make a big purchase, and they look at you and think, well, can you, then you say to the person, do you know who I am? Uh, not, not really, I'm, I'm, I'm the Oppenheimer's grandson. My, my, my uncle is the CEO of De Beers. You flesh out your title. Oh, yeah, sure, sir, we'll serve you. My question to you, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? You are the righteous, belonging to Christ. Everything he owns, you own. Everything he has, you have. Say, I'm rich. <laughs> Say, I'm rich. Say, everything's working together for my good. Say, I'm loaded. Say, I'm heavily laden in the name of Jesus. All right, what are we talking about? Giving your seed an assignment. All right, let's just carry on. I want you to turn in your Bibles to, hallelujah, Genesis 12, verse 2. Hallelujah. Say, I'm rich, man. Uh, some traditional folk can't handle that stuff. It's not because it's your fault. It's because someone schooled you the wrong way. <laughs> I'm schooling you now the right way. You are sons and daughters of prophecy. You prophesy your way out the tin shack. <laughs> Don't blame the government for where you are. What are you talking about? Don't blame the municipality for where you are. Don't blame your family for where you are. Find yourself, find out where you are, then start to prophesy yourself out. Out of poverty, out of sickness, out of lack, out of, you know, just everything that's adverse in your life. You prophesy yourself out of that. Say hallelujah. Now watch what God said to Abraham. He says, I'll make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Say, I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Now Genesis 13 verse 2. Turn there quickly with me. Genesis chapter 13 and verse 2. Genesis is on the front end of your Bible. It's actually the first book. <laughs> I was teaching in a conference at another church last yesterday. 
and I shared with him a scripture from Chronicles, and they were looking at the back part of the Bible for Chronicles. I thought, how sad. They don't even know where the scriptures are found. All right. Watch, watch Genesis 13, 2. And Abraham was very poor. No. Come read your Bible. It's in front. Listen. What you have in front of you is your Bible. Is that your Bible? Can I, can I alter your Bible? What does it say about Abraham? Now God, suppose this. I mean, you're intelligent, right? You are people full of common sense. And you are absolutely sharp. Think about this. God will not put meaningless details in the Bible to fill up space. I doubt that. If he put something in the Bible, it meant that he wanted you at some stage to find that out. Now, God said in his word, Abraham was very rich in what? In cattle, in silver, and in gold. Abraham was rich. I said, Abraham was rich. Now, because of time, I can't take you to all the scriptures, but Galatians tells us what? We are from the stock of Abraham. We are the seed of Abraham. That means the day we said yes to Christ and got born again, we come from the lineage of Abraham. Now suppose I say this to you. If Abraham was rich in cattle, in gold, in silver, now I prove to you, you are related to him. So, I am rich. So, you are rich. Why? Because God wants you to be rich. Say, it's God's will for me to be rich. Now, some people choose to be poor. It's all right if you want to be poor. Go ahead. It's fine. It's a choice. God does not force healing on you. If you want to die prematurely of cancer and go to an early grave, it's your choice. I mean, it's here. It's in the Word, what He's done for you. But if you, by choice, choose a lesser truth in the, in the Word of God, then He can't do nothing about it. You understand? If you say, well, cancer is God's will for me, you know, God, I'm a flower on the earth, so God wants to pluck up flowers and take them to heaven early. Give me a break. What religious rubbish. Like there's billions of people, but he sees you as a special flower. He'll put cancer on you to take you early to grief. What religious rubbish. He's given you life, but now he has to destroy you with cancer. That is not the nature of God. I'll tell you the nature of God. If you have cancer, he'll heal you. I'll tell you what else. It's not the nature of God to be poor. Look, he doesn't even say God in that scripture in Job. He doesn't even say God has some gold. It says God is gold and silver. Think about that. And so how would he want you poor? No, definitely not. Say amen. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So the Bible says, Abraham was very rich in cattle, silver, and gold. Psalm 50 verse 10. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. And I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If, if I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine. Watch this. He says, if I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine, as God speaking. He says, the world is mine, and the fullness thereof all belongs to me. Then in Haggai chapter 2, verse 8, the silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. So your Papa God is extremely, extremely wealthy. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, I don't know if you talk about God like that. Now, he could be to you Jehovah God or Jehovah Rapha or, you know, all of the terms that we call him. 
well, he can just be God, or he could be Jesus, or he could just be Papa God. Now, if you call God your Papa God, and he's really your daddy, he's really your Papa, then he's loaded. Whatever you want, ask him. <laughs> it's all yours. I said, it's all yours. I said, it's all yours. All right, let's go now. I want to talk to you about giving your seed an assignment. So we have established by the word of God, it is God's will. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Is it, here's my question to you, is it God's will for you to prosper? Yes. Say yes. yes. Who disagrees? So it's God's will for you to prosper. Is it God's will for you to be rich? Now, 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 positionally, scripturally, that is your position now, you might have not had the manifestation, but keep on speaking. It's first in the realm of the spirit, and then what? It manifests in the natural. So look at your wardrobe that has no clothes and prophesy to it. Look at your bank account and prophesy to it. Look at your old jalopy car that you're driving. That's smoking at the back and say, I see a brand new car. You, you know what I'm saying? You may be driving that now. It won't be long. If you will put the word of God in your heart, if you will speak it out of your mouth, your status will change. You got that. All right, now that we've established it's God's will for you to be rich and prosperous, now when wealth comes into your hand, let's see what you must do with seed. Because money, according to the Bible, is seed, right? Say, money is seed. seed. The Word of God is seed. seed. Money is seed. seed. All right. Now, when you have a bag of seed, what are you going to do with the bag of seed? Huh? All right. I said to you, money money is what? Money is seed. Now, let me share this with you. Very powerful. You will start catching now. Every seed has within it an invisible instruction. Tomato seeds placed in the ground cries out to the soil, burst me, I need to produce tomato trees. And from one seed, what do you get? You understand? Potato seeds, whatever seeds you plant on the ground, it has inside an inherent, invisible instruction, produce after my kind. So, what does this have? An invisible instruction. Inherent within it. The capability of producing after its kind. Because according, if you read the scriptures, according to God's word, this to you is money. Well, to some people it's God. This can't be your God. It's just a cross bull here. This can't be your God. It's a tool. And it's seed. So as seed placed in a ground has an invisible instruction to produce after its kind, money in your bag is tomato seeds in your bag. Money planted and sown goes with an instruction, produce after my kind. So money to a Christian, when you sow money, is not a loss. Are you listening to me? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your whole future depends on what I'm saying. How many of you want to really become wealthy and rich? Really, really. There's nothing wrong in that. You think God takes any delight in you, his kid, going around asking for loans, begging? No. No. 
and then you say, I'm a Christian. It's an embarrassment to God. Oh, boy. <laughs> because the gods of the pharaohs are producing. Why, are, why isn't the God of the Christians producing? It's not that he isn't producing. He has produced everything that needs to be produced. It's just that we guys don't know how to operate the system. Come on, talk to me. Talk about Muhammad. He's loaded. Come on, talk to me. Talk about, you know, Iqbal. He's loaded. Talk about Mamaji's shop in the corner. The guy's loaded. He's driving a smart, brand new Mercedes Sports. Here's a Christian. Jesus loves me on the back of his... <laughs> Jesus loves me at the back of his windscreen. And here he's going with his old... Scorro, scorro. Smoking with ball tires. Pat, 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 pat. And Muhammad drives behind you. He says, I feel sorry for the Christian. And he wants to tell me about his God. Come and use your common sense. So we are a poor representation. If we are poverty stricken, we are a poor representation of this big Yahweh God. The only living God. There's no other God. There's only this one living God. There's only one way to God is through Jesus Christ. But look at there. We, we are too pious. We're too religious. Don't talk about money. I'd rather be poor while the Hindus and the Muslims and the atheists and the people out in the world are prospering. Then you drive, you know, you park at a robot. Here's a guy comes with a big cigarette or a cigar. You know, earrings in his ear. I mean, he looks old. He's got a young 18-year-old next to him. <laughs> Blonde hair, blue-eyed. Red Jaguar. Worth a million rand. You come there as a Christian, you park next to him. And then now you want to look the other way. So a cop out, you say, ah, oh, look at that guy. He's smoking. He's not saved. When he dies, he's going to hell. Yes, when he dies, he may go to hell. But in the meantime, he's enjoying life. So I'm teaching you a secret. I'm showing you how to operate the system. There's only one way to get wealthy. <laughs> in God's economy and in God's system. Is get seed in your hand and you plant it. And you get seed in your hand and you plant it. And as you plant it, it has an inherent, invisible instruction to produce after its kind. Are you, are you with me? All right. So we're talking about what? Giving seed and assignment. Every seed contains an incredible assignment. When you sow seed in the kingdom of God, that seed is crying out. Let's say if your name is Henry and you plant seed, it's crying out, produce for Henry a hundredfold. <laughs> and it's coming back to you. The angels of God are doing what needs to be done to bring that back to you. Every seed which has an assignment is specific. It's exact. And it's precise. Watch. When God wanted sons, he sowed a... And one son. Jesus Christ had an incredible inherent assignment his assignment when he came to earth he was not distracted what was Jesus' assignment produce sons that's why he always in his conversations to his disciples what did he say he says my meat is to do the father's will he says you don't know they went to buy some food when he came back, he uttered, you know, you remember the well at Samaria, he uttered some words, and they thought someone brought him privately some food. 
And he said to them, you don't understand. He had an incredible assignment, produce sons. From one son that God had sown, what did he produce? Sons. You are the sons of God. The whole church are sons of God. Produced from... So if you want wealth, <laughs> what do you do? Huh? You know, David knew the secret in 2 Samuel 24, 25. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord was entreated for the land and the plague was stayed in Israel. Watch, you know, there was a great big plague in Israel and uh, nobody knew what to do. But look at David, what he did. He went and grabbed sacrifices and he brought it to the altar of the Lord and he, you know, made a sacrifice there. He actually uttered the words. He says, I will not give to God that which cost me nothing. Thousands of people were dying all around him. As he brought that sacrifice and he laid it on the altar, God stayed the plague. You want to stay the plague of poverty in your life? Boy, start sowing seeds. Don't see your sowing as a loss. See it with an assignment. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Then I shared with you Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, right? Let me close with the last one. What about when you are in a crisis, Christian? What do you do? So if you want wealth and riches, what would you do? So, what happens if you are in a crisis? You have a great big crisis. Like, I mean, the widow of, you know, of Zarephath. What did she do? Here comes a prophet. What did she do? She took a seed and sowed it. What did the seed produce? Flour and oil that, you know, just started to give of itself. She became wealthy. She paid out of a debt. Out of what? Out of a seed. It was a battle seed. A battle seed is any seed sown when you are confronted with a crisis. It will produce for you. Did you hear what I said? So what did I say about a battle seed? So learn how to plant a battle seed. When you experience a crisis, sow a battle seed. When you sow a battle seed, it becomes like an arrow. It's running a specific direction. It's on course. It has a particular assignment. If there's a mountain before you, and if you sow a battle seed, that mountain must crumble. So you say to me, but pastor, why are Christians lacking? Simply because there's nothing on your altars. Take note. Muslims know how to give. Can I repeat that? Muslims know how to give. And they work the principles of the kingdom of God and they steal the children's bread. Hindus know how to give. Because when they go to the temple, you think they go empty-handed? They go their sacrifices to the priest. They take offerings. And of the Christians, yes, some of them know how to sow seed. Most of them don't know. So you lack and have not. Why? Your, your, your altars are empty. So what do you have to do? Is bring seed to the altar. Bring battle seed when you have a crisis to the altar. And what will it do? It will be like an arrow. It will, you know, produce for you. Because it has an assignment. What is the assignment of the seed? Shatter that mountain. What is the assignment of that seed? Shatter that sickness. What is the assignment of that seed? Grow the business. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't get quiet on me. You will not intimidate me. I'm beyond intimidation. When I went yesterday to preach, the God...